So periodically, I choose to answer people's questions and I have a lot of questions and I try from time to time to answer some of these questions. So in this video, we are going to be answering five of these questions at random and I'll be answering many, many more in the future. And if you like these answers, then check out my answering your questions folder for more. My name is Brian Mercier, and I'm a professional Catholic speaker and the founder and president of Catholic Truth, which is a nonprofit ministry dedicated to the truth of God, Jesus, and the Catholic faith, life and living. So here we go. Let's answer these questions. The first question is, what is a good age to get married? And the answer is 40. Just kidding. I have no idea. It depends on the person. Every single person is different. Every single situation is different. And the age is not as important as the person you find. And I'm gonna be making a lot of videos on this, on love and relationships, but one person asked me why my wife and I have such a happy marriage, such, have such a good marriage, and why so many other people have miserable marriages. And one of the biggest things that I can offer you today is to find the right person and not compromise. And whether you do that at 21, or whether you do that at 31, or perhaps even 41, you finding the right person that God has for you is going to help you to have the happiest marriage. So I don't wanna just say, oh, it's 40, oh, it's 30, oh, it's 21, because really, there's no right answer. It's when it's right for you. But don't rush it and don't compromise. Question number two, where does evil come from? Well, 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 that is a good question. I mean, we know that Lucifer, who used to be an angel in heaven with God, he rebelled against God in heaven when God gave all of the angels a test to see who would stay faithful and who would not. But Lucifer decided, and he got a third of all the other angels in heaven to rebel against God and to rise up against him. Now, when Lucifer was cast out of heaven, this fallen angel lost everything he had, all light, peace, joy, goodness. And so when he got booted from heaven, he was emptied of everything that is heaven. And he was left with hate, rage, pain, revenge, and evil. And he's a real sore sport. He doesn't want to go to hell alone, so he's going to tempt us. He's going to inflict and poison us with his evils and try to make us sin against God, rebel against God the same way that he did. And so that, my friends, is the origin of evil. We call him the devil, we call him Lucifer, we call him Satan, and if you've ever seen The Exorcist or another true story where someone gets possessed by the devil, then you can see that evil incarnate. The third question is this. If a man or woman is raped, does it count against them as sex before marriage? And the answer, of course, is no. Why? We know that sex before marriage is one of the biggest sins against God. In fact, in the Bible, God considers it on par with murder and idolatry. Sex is so beautiful, so holy, and so sacred to God. It's something that we need to do His way. And the Bible condemns fornication, which is sex before marriage. However, rape is different because you did not choose to engage in sex before before marriage. You did not choose to engage in that act. You had it forced upon you. And so there's nothing you could do about it. You didn't have free will. You didn't act on it. You didn't choose it. And therefore, it's not held against you and it's not counted in God's eyes as sex before marriage. See, our virginity for some people, may be taken from us. But in reality, virginity is something we give away. Our sexuality is something we give away. And when someone forces themselves into our life and steals it from us and takes it from us, God does not count that against us. It might count it against the person who does it for sure, but he will not count it against you. And I know people who have been raped. I have friends who have been, and they've struggled with it. They've cried over it, and they found deep healing in Jesus, complete healing in Jesus. So just if you are someone out there like that, know that you should run to Jesus and not away from him. He is the healing and the joy and the peace and the new life you are looking for in that regard. So if you've been raped, it's not counted against you. And if somebody really loves you and they're a real person, a real Christian, they are not going to count it against you either. The fourth question is this. 
why are we allowed to receive communion in some of the other Christian churches that are not Catholic? And that's a great question because, in fact, we are not allowed to receive communion in other churches. We're only allowed to receive communion in the Catholic Church, and the only other possible exception to that is the Orthodox Church because they are almost the exact same as the Catholics, and they have valid sacraments, which means they really have the Eucharist, the body and blood of Christ, because they broke away from us in the first place. So, but if you go to like, let's say Hillsong, or if you go to the Baptist Church down the street, or a Pentecostal Church, or another Protestant Mormon Jehovah's Witness Church, we can't receive communion there first because they don't have real communion. The body and blood of Christ is found in the Catholic Church because Jesus gave himself to us in the Eucharist. But Protestant churches and other Christian churches, they only believe that communion is a symbol. They don't even believe it's really Jesus or his body or his blood for the most part. And even if they did, they don't have valid priests or valid authority to consecrate that host, to make it true communion. The fullness of communion and sacramental grace is in the Catholic Church. That's why we are allowed to receive communion in the Catholic Church, but not in other churches, because we don't want to give a false witness or lead to scandal saying, oh, it's okay, or all churches are the same. We all just worship Jesus. It's just different. But no, the difference is that the Catholic Church and the Catholic Church alone was started by Jesus. So we can't receive them because they don't have that authority, and it's not real communion, and because our church is the true church. And if people want to receive the Catholic Church communion, uh, I would invite them to be Catholic. And I made a whole video on that. It's my first video I ever made. It's terrible. I need to remake it. But it's there if you want to see it. Let's get to the last question. The last question is this. Why did Hitler kill so many people? That is a very fascinating question. It's because he believed in what's called eugenics or the search for the master race, trying to help human evolution to speed up the process, to become bigger, stronger, faster, more pure, and more perfect. How do we do that? We do that through eugenics, by getting rid of the weak people in society and breeding the strong. Kind of like you take thoroughbred horses or dogs and you want to breed them only if they're thoroughbreds. You don't want mixed in order to have the best horses, the best racers. Uh, it's the same thing or the same philosophy with humans. Even Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, most people don't realize this, but Hitler and Sanger, founder of Planned Parenthood, learned eugenics from the same sources in England. And I have two whole blog posts on this topic if you're interested at catholicbrian.org. Uh, but the bottom line is that Hitler and Sanger, they both wanted to have a perfect master race. And so Hitler ended up getting rid of anyone who wasn't perfect. And he started euthanizing by the tens and hundreds of thousands, people who were alcoholics, people who had diseases, people who were weak and feeble, people who had this and that. And of course, he saw other races as inferior too. And so he started wiping out and killing other races. Uh, as a side note, Margaret Sanger didn't believe in that brutish method of wiping people out. She believed in the more civilized method of wiping people out, she said, and that was through birth control or contraception. She wanted people who were strong, fit, people who were rich, wealthy, and had good genes. She wanted them to breed and to have a lot of sex so they could pass on their genes. Whereas people who were poor, feeble, stupid and dumb, idiotic, people who had diseases, were alcoholics, had any strand of bad in them, she wanted them to use birth control so that they didn't have to breed and pass on their genes to other generations. The bottom line is Hitler wanted a master race. There's been many eugenists, including like Thomas Malthus in England and others who have wanted a master race and who have applied Darwin's principles of survival of the fittest to the human race. Keep the fit, get rid of the weak. That's what Hitler wanted to do, and he tried to do it on a wide scale. I hope those were helpful. I hope you liked those questions. If you have any more, let me know, and check out the folder, Your Questions Answered, for actually more questions answered. And in a short time, I will get to a lot more of these. Uh, please let me know if you like these answers. Please let me know if you like uh, this video. And please let me know if you would like to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching. Check out my Patreon page. Consider supporting us. You have a good day.